every day. Um, gonna make this um, bull and advice. Uh, got the ingredients ready. Got the water up to the temperature. Uh, let me show you the stamp. It's only 22 and a half litres, just less than. Two. So, uh, maybe 20, I'm not sure. I think it's 22, maybe 23 litres. I need to take half a litre out of that. Anyway, uh, that's up to 40 degrees. Um, very small mash, and do about 15 litres final volume. I might split that to make different things. Got pills the mould, one point kilo pills the mould, uh, 300 grams of Maris Otter, and 1.25 grams of wheat. Uh, slightly more meat, well, it's about 50 50 mi mix of different malts. Um, I've got so I'm going to get a mash for a bit, uh, then I'm going to pop this in there, which is that is my um lactobacillus that I seeded into some water last night. Uh, I actually also did a starter for the um Kolsch. But the culture isn't doing anything. So I'm just going to show some South Hale 05. This is the recipe. Oh, so we can see that. There it is. Uh, I think I'm I'm shooting for a um, uh, estimated AV about 3.6. I think it's just that. It'll go down by about 1 to get it soured. Uh, Pilsner mould, slug mould. Now I start to put some USO5 into um, ferment and some hollow tower in the uh, in the boil. Not much of that though. So uh, that's it. Uh, let's crack on. I'm, uh, tonight I'm just going to uh, mash for about an hour, and then uh, bring it up, boil it for 15 minutes, cool it down to circa 40ish. A bit lower than 40 and then uh, pitch the pitch like lactobacillus and then leave it on that leave it on that outside until tomorrow and i'll check the ph tomorrow and hopefully it'll be uh right up where i need it by about midday if not overnight if it goes pretty quickly all right let's do it so a bit of an intermediate update um mash went well uh, i collected about 21 liters and i the Gravity was 28, which is good. And um, estimated mash efficiency, well, measured mash efficiency was 73.7, which is good. I'm going to get about 70. So, uh, and also, wheat is always bad. It never really uh, comes out like it should do. Um, any other things? Um, nothing else? No? Uh, pH was about 5. Um, but they say to get the pH quite and down quite low anyway when you're uh, doing it to step in stop any other bacteria trying to grow in it um, I'm quite sure it's definitely lacto in there. It's lactobacillus in there. It's not anything else. So um, it should be fine, but A um, uh, little bit lower. It's five fives good on me. So what will happen now is that I will um, I'm just bring it to the boil. I boil for 15 minutes, chill it down to about to about 37, and then uh, pitch my lactobacillus, and that'll be it. I'll leave it then for 24 hours. Oh god, I mean, it most likely will be um, Sunday, but they forecast rain Sunday, which I don't know. Hopefully, if it's at really good, at the right temperature, it's going to be really up there and fermenting really quickly. So it should. Maybe I should be able to, be, by 5 o'clock tomorrow, it should be about ready to go. Touch wood. Okay, uh, I'll keep you updated, but uh, at the moment, let me show you what's going on. So, Lactobacillus, I had a taste of it. It uh, tastes nice and tangy, so that's uh, doing well there. I think it's still fermenting a little bit. Um, as I said, my numbers... Uh, stop focusing, is it? There we are. So, I collected... Uh, the 1028 specific gravity measures out of mass efficiency of 73.7. Let's go past the uh, cooking. Some killers there. Okay, so I've uh, washed up 
Um, oh, can't see much here. That was like, oh, there we are. They, so the, uh, I um, rinsed that off a little bit and I rinsed off the filter beds, filter things. Um, and just up to 91. Let's have a look if you can. Ooh, yeah, up to 91 there. It's going for 98 actually, but I'll be fine. I think the pump stopped and uh, it's not too bad. It's a bit red, isn't it? Let's get the colour up. There we are. So, um, yeah, that's just boiling it, coming up to boil and uh, it's nice and clear when it come out. Got my chilli there ready to go in and uh, yes, all going well. So I've just finished doing a uh, 15 minute boil and just chilling it down. It's coming down quite rapidly, the uh, water temperature is uh, quite good now. Uh, just using some of the water to um, give us a rinse off because it's got some yucky stuff on the outside of it. But uh, down to the right temperature we will uh, pitch the lactose, lactobacillus, which I will uh, measure the temperature of the water at the top as well when, uh, when we're ready. Bit of a small kit update. I bought a uh, electronic probe doodah, um, mainly for cooking actually, but um, it's also quite useful for doing uh, beer, obviously. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, I use that for. I might just use this to measure the temperature at the top there to make sure the uh, the water is all at the same temperature. So we're down to uh, thirty-seven. I'm going to hold that temperature now. I'm going to um, what's he doing again? Anything else in there? I'm going to pitch the lactobacillus in a second and give it a little bit of a stir and seal the top up completely and leave that then until it's uh, down to the correct pH. Oh, yeah, and it's because it's outside. <laughs> I'm going to um, bag all this uh, wire up. It's actually secured up over there with the um, on the outdoor socket anyway, but uh, completely covered all this. Up, so it, if it does rain a little bit, it'll all be safe, and uh, that'll be good. I might even get my um, nice little thermal jacket stick on the outside here, so it's uh, nice and cosy, which I've got upstairs. Right, so I'll see you next time when we make to finish off. So it's the morning, uh, just got to jump in the shower, but uh, let's have a quick look and see how it's coming on. So I had this tarpaulin over overnight. Um, I turned it down to about 35. Can you see up there? Yep. Let's have a quick peek inside. So as you can see, it's uh, really fermenting really hardly there. I need to take need to take some out now and uh, check the pH because I, what I did I put some cellophane over the top there to keep it nice and sealed. I need to take it out now and get some P get a pH reading because uh, I don't want it to ferment all the sugars away because I don't have any alcohol. So uh, I'm going to take a sample now and we'll see how what the pH is. So as we can see it's down to 2.9. That needs to be started boiling straight away. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's doing very well, isn't it? So um, an update. I've just taken taken pH reading and she said it's about 3. Uh, so that's... Uh, Lactobacillus has really been chewing through it. Um, it smells quite nice and uh, nice on top. Anyway, um, in respects to uh, final ABV out, it's been having a go at it. Uh, it's down to about 10 point zero, ten twenty. So um, uh, yeah, it's chewed through something like eight eight points of gravity to get to that sourness. Um, I'm going to bolt off now, hopefully that will bump up the uh, original gravity a little bit, maybe up to, oh dear, might go back up to 30 if I'm lucky, but bullet for an hour, bitter it up, went to it's down to about 15 uh, litres and then decant it out. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, definitely quite aggressive, um, we'll, I'll, uh, Come back to you when they go to the boil and um, let's see how we get on. 
Okay, so in respect of hops, um, I had to do a slight readjustment. Um, what I did, I just spun up another uh, recipe on Beersmith and uh, just did my malt bill so that the ABV is about 10.28, or final gravity about 10 to an, yeah, 10 28, where I think this will be at, or I think I'm going to boil it for about half an hour, about 90 minutes, and that should bring it down to about 15. Should give us the a ABV of beer around three percent, which is quite low, but I don't think uh, the wind needs to be that strong. Um, Brit, better device. Um, so it's uh, just come up to the ball now. So I've worked out how much hops I need, about eight, about eight grams. That's all I need. Uh, not much at all. Um, some things I have what about, sorry about the waving around, I've left my um, my tripod at, uh, somewhere so I can't actually uh, stick it on there. Anyway, uh, normal service will be resumed soon once I get it back. Um, so uh, what I want to do, I want to do, I want to split the batch at the end. And what I'm going to do, I want to stick two sorts of berries. I wanted, I was thinking raspberry, which I can buy locally, there's some in that's got obviously uh, late like some hops, raspberry hops, not hopping around. And I was thinking about another berry, and uh, I couldn't quite work it out. I wanted to put cherries in or something like that. Strawberries are a bit lame, they don't really have that much flavour. But one thing I do know, which is growing on the plant, on the, on the in the hedges around it here, is uh, blackberries or brambles. So I will go out and pick a big shitload of brambles. Um, and uh, I'm going to stick, I'm going to split the batch into about seven litres of each and stick uh, raspberries in one, squashed up raspberries in one and squashed up blackberries in the other. Um, I'm going to inoculate them slightly, but then may, I mean, I'll see the, and I'll make sure the uh, Safael 05 is well, it started eating away at the, um, the wort before I pitch the um, what is it before I pitch the fruit, which will be maybe 24 hours afterwards. Um, that will obviously give the the yeast time to establish itself, and then any nasties or any better or anything else or any other bugs which are actually living on the brambles will um, will. I have to fight to actually get over the um, the strength of the uh, Zephyl 05 yeast. I don't know if I'm name. Anyway, a bit of a microbial uh, battle that's going on there. Um, there may be a bit of bread getting there, but get off of that berries, so we'll have to see. Um, but we'll uh, see how it comes out. Um, with the uh, raspberries, they've been cleaned in the factory and I think they're going to be very clean. Um, I may actually chuck them both into the freezer for um, 24 hours just to break up the uh, break up the capillaries and everything. Um, when when the fruit comes out of the freezer then it's, it's quite mushy and I can just squish it down and chuck it into the, into the brew. So both of those are going to go in after, uh, after 24 hours. I'm going to get, get a hold of that stuff now. Uh, ferment the whole lot out and uh, see how it comes, how it comes on. So, this comes to the boil. Oop, a bit messy there. Um, it smells a bit like, uh, do it at Christmas when you have uh, that wine, mulled wine, and you, and you bring it to the boil. That's what it smells like at the moment. Um, you can smell some of the alcohol which is in there boiling off. If we look very careful there, a little bit of fizzing going on. I think that's CO2 which is actually in the uh, in the liquid and also it may even be the last def, def well it might be a little bit le less of the, um, no, I think it's just CO2 boiling off. But CO2, um, um, alcohol and also you can smell the sour smell coming off as well and any off flavours which the breath has put in there which uh, what normally happens if you boil it off it actually boils off uh, a lot of the chemicals that you don't really want to have in your final brew. Um, 
so yeah it's coming on I'm up to 83 and it's just above 20 there so uh, I need to boil off about five liters and I'm going to put the hops in for the last 30 minutes okay so it's down to about 18 liters um, I'm going to pitch this and boil it for another half an hour this is eight grams of uh half tower middle flow, whatever it's called. I've taken a um a gravity reading again, it's down to about five bricks, which is uh four fives of twenty um twenty IB or twenty uh gravity or well, ten twenty. So it's uh not Going to be a very strong brew that's about two percent but well as, as i said what i'm, I'm going to do is to put um some fruit in to ferment with this as well afterwards so that should boost it by a few percentage um so we're gonna have like maybe seven liters of each to ferment out um so and yeah i'll pop those into Demi john's and let that go but um so we might get something maybe three and a half, four percent once the fruit sugars have been chewed up, which will are almost hundred percent fermentable. So let's go for another thirty minutes and then we'll uh, chill it down. So we added the boil. Um, I might cut it slightly short, but I think I was boiling off too much water than I wanted to. I don't want to bother too much. I don't want to take too much away. Um, it could be bulked up with some blackberries and raspberries then, um, once uh, it gets uh, down to the right fermentation temperature. I've got my uh, 15 litre fermentation bucket there ready for the wort. It's all, all um, hydrated. Got a pack of Safael USO5 out there ready to be dumped in there. Um, and got a couple of Demijohns to uh, decant the wort out into tomorrow uh, once it's been going for about 24 hours and fermenting out a bit. I'm suspecting that it'll be fermented out within maybe two days once the wort itself is only going to be about. 1020 if that maybe about 1023 now if it's bored a little bit more um so yeah cool it down pop it into there just get it going and then tomorrow i'll stick some fruit in see you soon. so it's the end of the boil the water's about 20 centigrade at the moment so i'm not really going to get down below 20 anyway so what i'm going to do is to uh, let's have a look <laughs> it's very murky isn't it i going to decant it out of here into the uh, to there and I'm going to stick it in the fridge at 19 centigrade and it will uh, bring it down to that temperature then I'll put some yeast in a few hours time I don't think anything else is going to grow in there apart from the yeast because it's obviously too acidic for any bacteria or anything so uh, it should be good What I've got left these are my two uh, demijohns this has got the raspberry in it it's about I think 400 grams of raspberries in there and this is just a whole box of blackberries which I just picked fresh and chucked in there um, so yeah you can say this is fermenting which is, which is a good thing and thank to this actually so uh, that's a good thing as yeast doing stuff in there there's enough sugar there to make a very very sour very low alcohol uh, drink and ditto for this one here so it'll be interesting to see what it does. So I'll just top off this video, a bit of a summary of where we are. Um, this is the raspberry, it is still fermenting. You can see it's even uh, coming out. This is after one week, after the brew day. Um, in all, it's been quite good. I'm quite excited to taste these drinks once they're ready. I don't know whether they'll be classed as beers after I've stuck so much I mean this one here has got quite a lot of raspberries in it, the other one's got 
uh, shitload of brambly, bramble, 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 I don't know, bramble, that berries in them. So uh, that one's going to be very much like a wine, a very sour wine as such, in a way. Um, I've got the rest, I've got another five gallons of the uh, beer that I made last week it's down there. Don't want to do that at the moment. I might just. I don't know, I may, may just use it for just souring up other drinks and things. Uh, above all, it's been a good experience. Um, come on, I'll come back in a while and give you some tasting notes once uh, they finish fermenting and uh, been bottled up and conditioned. I think it's going to take and let them condition for a couple of months and need to get them carved up and stuff like that. But uh, I'll come back to you then. Right.